because you wouldn't intentionally do that to yourself, right? Who would? Why would we constantly tell ourselves that we're not good enough? Yet I know that that's the record playing in your brain. It's been, it's been played in my brain over and over again. That's why you've got to pay attention to it. That's why you've got to realize that those thoughts, those beliefs are roadblocks. They may be roadblocks, but they can be moved out of the way. And that comes with you deciding to choose new thoughts on purpose. Hello and welcome to the Love Your Work Life podcast. I'm your host, Elisa Shuck. Whether you're going for that next promotion, looking for a job, or making a career pivot, I'll teach you how to navigate it all so you can have the career you want. Welcome to Love Your Work Life, episode 152. I don't know if it's the coffee I had this morning or the furious notes I was taking about today's topic, but I know you're going to be thrilled about this topic as well because it's all about unlocking your ideal future. What do you want for yourself? What is it that's been nagging and gnawing at you that you want. I'm going to teach you three principles that are going to help you make it happen. Now, my friends, why is this important? Well, it's because if you've got that nagging little feeling and you've been kind of pushing it aside, pushing it aside, ignoring it, it's not going to go away. It just won't. And here's the reason is because we are wired for continued growth and expansion. When you start to feel uncomfortable at work or bored with the team that you're leading or the role that you have, I'm not saying bored with your folks. That's that's probably never a thing. But just knowing that there's something more for you, that you've got more to contribute, that is not a feeling that's going to go away. When you get that next promotion, it's going to feel great. I just had someone message me today on LinkedIn, two years in to the new job that they got um, the last time we talked, and they're kind of ready, kind of ready for something more. And that's just normal. This feeling of dissatisfaction is normal when you have been someplace too long, or when you've just got that feeling that there's something more. You're not unusual. There's nothing wrong with you. When you feel that feeling, it's because you're not caught up with the bigger vision that you have for your life. Your vision is here and you're kind of hanging out here. That's why this is so important. That's why I know these three steps are going to be incredibly helpful to you figuring out how to unlock that dream and go for it and not just go for it, but achieve it. We love the journey. Of course, we should appreciate the journey on the way, but the journey is to go to that next level, to achieve that level of growth and contribution and responsibility that you have envisioned for yourself. So step one in making this happen is to remove any roadblocks. And by roadblocks, I don't mean other people or lack of opportunity or whatever, you know, the ATS, <laughs> whatever people are want to think are their roadblocks when we're talking about a job search, when we're talking about progress in a career. Those are not your roadblocks, my friend. Your roadblock, my roadblock, the roadblock that we all have to deal with is what's going on in our own brains. That's it. 
And as soon as you figure out how to manage your mindset, as soon as you figure out that your biggest and only roadblock is what you are thinking about yourself, you are on your way to achieving your dream, to unlocking that for yourself. And here's what I mean by that. It's your thoughts. Your thoughts influence your mindset. Mindset might be a way to talk about the bigger picture of it, but it really comes down to the individual thoughts that are dominating in your own mind. Um, and more, the more you focus on a particular thought, it becomes a belief. A belief is just a thought you keep on thinking. Um, unfortunately, when we're young, we are conditioned with other people's thoughts. Thoughts like, you could never do that. You're not good enough. Um, you don't have the right background. Whatever those limiting beliefs are, uh, most likely it's because someone else planted those into your brain and they've just been on repeat for years and years and years. You might not even realize that it's a belief that you are clinging to somewhere in there because you wouldn't intentionally do that to yourself, right? Who would? Why would we constantly tell ourselves that we're not good enough? Yet I know that that's the record playing in your brain. It's been, pl it's pl been played in my brain over and over again. That's why you've got to pay attention to it. That's why you've got to realize that those thoughts, those beliefs are roadblocks. They may be roadblocks, but they can be moved out of the way. And that comes with you deciding to choose new thoughts on purpose. There's not a ton we can control when it comes to other people, when it comes to circumstances. I totally get that. But that's all right, because what we can control is actually our most powerful asset. And that is our own thoughts going on in our own brains. Now, the second thing you need to do is appreciate your journey. Look for the ways that you have progressed. You as I said earlier, have always been expanding. You have always been growing. So appreciating that journey, looking for that progress is so empowering because even though you might feel stuck right now, you got here from somewhere else and that's progress. It's worthy of appreciation. It's worthy of recognition. And I know sometimes you're just giving it to yourself. I, I listened to, uh, oh gosh, I, this is something that motivated me over and over again. It was a, a recording, uh, of a song and someone was saying, look, sometimes you don't have somebody to lay hands on you and pray for you. Sometimes you're laying hands on yourself. Sometimes you are the one, the only one believing for what you want and looking at your history, looking at that journey and appreciating all that you've come through is a major step in helping you get from here to there. Because you've got all this evidence that you've done it before and that means you can do it again. Remind yourself of the stories. All that value goes with you, my friend. Everything you look back on, you get to choose what you carry forward with you. And I know I have some very negative stories in my career past. I bet you do too. And those things will pop up from time to time in my brain. They may pop up from time to time in your brain, but that is the moment to not dwell on it or indulge it or take that dive back into that negative conversation or that narcissistic boss, whatever it was, that moment is your reminder to say, wow, I made it through that. 
and that reminder of what you do want and where you are headed. That's how to use every single story in your past, everything about that journey to your unique advantage, because it's all pointing the way to what you do want. That is the power for sure. Now, the last thing is painting a vivid picture of success. And I've talked about this before. Every single promotion I ever got, and I I can say this with absolute honesty, truthfulness, and authenticity, every single promotion I got was because I visualized myself in that role beforehand. And I'm not just saying, you know, do a vision board um, and then forget it. This is a habit. This is a new way of thinking about your career that will absolutely change where you go from here. It will absolutely unlock that ideal that you have in mind for yourself. And It's active. It's a new way of thinking. It's a new way of behaving. The formula is imagination plus vividness plus emotion plus inspired action. It's those four things that create the new reality, that create the success that you're after, that next move, that progress, whatever it is you have in mind. Now, imagination is just play. We used to do this so easily, so effortlessly when we were little kiddos, right? Daydreaming, thinking about what it would be like to do this or do that. What did we want to be when we we grow up, right? It's imagination. It's allowing yourself to really have some fun and play with what you want to do. Oh. Vividness means lots and lots of detail. What are you wearing? What are you doing? Um, what are you, how are you walking around? What is the environment that you're in? It seems odd to give it that much detail when kind of what we're talking about is an unknown, but I'm telling you, it will help you with the next step. And that is emotion. By painting a really imaginative, vivid picture, you'll start to feel it. That's how you know that your picture is vivid enough and that you've put enough imagination into it is because you can't help but feel it, feel the happiness of it, feel the freedom of it, feel the sense of authority and influence. You've had those moments. That's why step two was appreciating the journey because you've had those moments. So you can tap into those feelings from the past, bring them into your current picture and just feel how awesome it is. And that leads us to the next step, inspired action. Inspired action always comes from a great feeling. When you are not enjoying your world, you can take action, sure. You can put in a ton of effort and you can, you can uh, do it. We all kind of have that certain sense of discipline, right? We're kind of taught that. Do it anyway, even if it feels awful. Sure, that's something that you can do, but it's not as effective. And it just takes longer. Inspired action comes from a good feeling place. It comes from a place that feels kind of effortless. And inspired action is very forward looking. It's it's full of curiosity. And it's one of the things that's going to ultimately get you the result. It's tapping into that vivid picture. It's tapping into your imagination. It's tapping into emotion in a way that helps you see past your current circumstances and look 
towards the future that's 100% available to you. And when I talk about this process of imagination, vividness, emotion, inspired action to get the results you want to unlock your ideal, not one and done. It's kind of a fanatical determination to think on purpose. It's a fanatical commitment to choose you and to develop new beliefs and new beliefs based on new thoughts that you keep on thinking so that those beliefs grow stronger. And what you want is no longer a question. It's only when. It's getting ready to be ready. It's I'm ready for this next thing. It's not a focus on the present. It's a focus on the future. Unlocking your ideal is so much easier than you think. I cannot tell you how many things fell into place that wasn't a decision I made, but because I was focused on what I wanted, when opportunities presented themselves, I was inspired to take action. One example is I had envisioned myself getting a promotion in a company that, gosh, outwardly didn't really look that that was possible, but change happened. Circumstances fell into place. And when that door opened, I went directly to the CEO and I said, I want that job. Now, my friends, had I been not visualizing my future potential, had I not been feeling like it was possible and knowing what I was capable of, I'm telling you, I would, that, that was inspired action. That action of me going in to the interim CEO and saying, that's the job I want. That was inspired action. Had I not built up the thoughts and the belief in myself prior to that, I probably wouldn't have gone in. I probably would have hoped and wished and waited for someone else to notice me instead of for me to say, no, 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 this is my time. Do these three steps. Get all of your own roadblocks out of the way. Work on your brain on purpose. Change those thought patterns. Move those things out of the way that have been holding you back for way too long. Look back at your journey and appreciate the good things and carry those with you. It's evidence. It's evidence, evidence, evidence that you can do it again. And then, of course, last but not least, paint that vivid picture. Make it full of imagination. Make it with detail and vividness. And I'm talking sight, smells, colors. Like if you could taste it, <laughs> what would it taste like? And then feel how awesome it is because that's what's going to propel you forward with inspired action. It's like digging a pool with big machinery instead of with a teaspoon. That's the difference that this can make. All right, my friends, go for it. And I expect comments, follows, all of the things. Tell me how it's working. I would love to hear about your success stories. All right, we'll talk to you again soon. If you like listening to this podcast, I invite you to visit the Love Your Work Life website at elisashuck-careercoach.com. On the site, you're going to find free resources and information about all of my coaching programs, everything you need to land a great job, advance your career, and lead and build an awesome team. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn.